season three of Sword Art Online. We are here. We are here to experience uh, what Kirito and the rest of the gang has in store for us. Oh god, has it really been since 2012 since we've had Sword Art Online season one though? Oh god, I feel old now. Now thinking about it, like we've had three seasons now we're on we've had ovas and extras and specials and we've had a movie and we've had about 20 subpar video games as well i can definitely concur to those a lot of them are meh but here we are like after all this time and to see kirito on his next mmo adventure and this one is talking about underworld so to say to clarify for a lot of people um about this season and also as well my experience with sword art online i've practically been an anime only watcher since the entire time like i've read the first four of the light novels which like honestly colors a bit of alfheim and a bit of like just the uh, early stuff with einkrad so pretty much all the stuff with gun gale and all the stuff with underworld i pretty much had nothing really no knowledge to at all. I have, however, seen the uh, uh, Ordinal Scale movie. That was okay for the most part. I will have to mention something as well with the production of this episode, or hopefully for the rest of this season, I should uh, hopefully say, because this first episode is A, it is 46 minutes long. It is long. It is a very lengthy episode to get us started, where it's like, it is pretty much cut into two parts, to say the least. But holy shit, to say that like, with uh, this episode, it looked gorgeous. It was start to finish, it looked um, amazing. Even without like the animations, uh, like uh, action scenes. like It was just a really nice episode. And funny enough, this looked so much better than the movie. Like It still baffles me that Ordinal uh, Scale must have been made on the dirt cheap. Because this looks better than or like Ordinal Scale. And honestly, that... That's more a complaint about that movie in general. Like, again, you don't have to see Ordinal Scale. It is fine like that. It doesn't... But then again, like, this show, and especially with the opening, heavily dictates as well some stuff from Ordinal Scale. Also as well from one of the video games. There was a reference to one of the characters uh, from there. So there's a lot in this, like, uh, episode, and to say the least. And we are going to attempt to digest a lot of this episode. So good luck, embrace yourself, and don't worry, I'll be getting a ton of things wrong. So strap yourself in for season three of Sword Art Online. Where we start off as Kirito, as a kid? We start off with two of these blonde little friends of his, Alice and Yujio. Which we find out that they're in this little fantasy world, and like they're training like, seemingly to become knights for the most part, and... They, the three of them, like, just uh, general, like, friends. It seems like magic's in this world. Like, everything's, like, up there. And they decide to go to travel to this sort of, like, cave system where it's like, oh, we need to go and get some ice or our food. You know, the villagers will love us for this. And, however, they're not allowed to really go uh, past this, uh, the, where the, these mountains are because apparently it's the billion lands around there. But it's like, ah, oh, don't worry, we're kids, we're fine. Don't worry about this whatsoever. Nothing can go wrong. We just don't have to cross the other side. Which ends up them finding where this frozen dragon, uh, like, uh, like, or at least this ice dragon, used to lay. We find out much later on that there's this myth uh, mystical sword there, like this blue rose sword. Oh, I wonder if that'll be used later. Totally don't see Yujio using the same sword in the opening whatsoever, but we'll, we'll see. Like they pretty much leave behind. The kids get lost because they're stupid kids. This leads to them seeing this fight between like this evil dragon knight and this white uh, holy knight who looks a lot like Tatsumi from a Kami Guy Kill when he's using his like um uh, transformations in he looks a lot like that so that's a plus on that it's a very rad armor design which this blue knight entices Alice to like help me I'm dying please help me and he and she's like as a kid like tries to sneak over oh I'll help you and she doesn't go over the line, more like her fingers cross the tiniest bit that's still, and there's like this weird like AI thing that's like, yep, we've made the report, yep, she technically broke them, yep, fuck you, which they return back like a day later, the night's there, and it's like, yeah, Alice broke the rules, we have to kidnap her, and yep, this pretty much ends up with like, Kirito is trying to save her, and it's like, no, I'm going to have to protect you. The knight's too powerful. 
every, all the villagers are just fine with this. He screams at Yujio. Weirdly enough, when you see Yujio, which by the way, he just he is just a blonde Kirito. To say the least, like I don't know anything about this character at all, apart from what I've seen of him in like Fatal Bullet, like and a little bit of just snippets here and there. But I'm just saying, character design wise, he is a blonde Kirito, and it was like just really distracting when looking at him. It's like, oh, they just have the same face, and they just the, all you can only tell the difference by their hair color. And I was looking at them, and like he had this thing where it's like like access denied like he was having for uh, his eyes so whether or not that means he's an ai or something or what fully going on with a lot with yujio we don't particularly know we don't know if alice is an ai because there is some thing in the opening that hints as well to this alice system and also as well the fact of that how a lot of what underworld is based on as well which i found kind of interesting but that leads up to kirito waking up which ends that sort of segment the underworld segment which is like very weird as them as kids and finding out that this is what kirito's been up to since then where he's been kind of working for this guy and been testing a lot of new sort of vr sort of technology which one of the uh which we find out much later on kind of like as they're discussing about this is that it is using the sense of like your soul like it, the fact that they're trying to even like dialogue it whereas like they're using the fa same sort of technology as like you know where you can access your soul and like th the way how this vr works is that kind of the same sort of thing that you have when you're asleep when you feel like it, using the concept of like if you've ever been had like a dream and you've had those ones that felt like they lasted for hours or like days and weeks and then you wake up and it's been like you've been in a deep sleep for about two hours or something like not even that long it is using the same concept where it's like you could have more time and more experience down the road or like using this so technically if you're in this uh mmo world for let's say i think they said that kirito was in this for like three days and apparently the total accumulated time was like 10 to a month of time that he was there experiencing it so pe basically people can have like it is the same idea as like oh if i'm in here for like say like i spend my entire weekend in the vr mmo it is technically like i'm spending two months there like you know or like i had a crazy adventure so that sounds ridiculous totally doesn't sound like some uh any crazy thing also as well one thing that's really creepy as well like because like screw it like fuck talking about the gun gale stuff for the moment because that that part and all that is nice and there's a nice action shot but there is one really creepy scene in this where it's like oh but like you see arsena like oh by the way on my phone i have kirito's heartbeat I have this thing implanted in me to keep an eye on it. And it's showing that you like she cares and she wants to keep an eye on him, but it's really fucking creepy. And I'm glad that Shinon is like, that's fucked up. Like, you know, you two are a couple. You love each other. Look, if I'm going to date a girl and she's like, I don't feel comfortable. I need to know where your heartbeat is at all times. I'm like, bitch, just call me. I'm fine. Like, Kirito doesn't have heart health issues or anything like that. Although they're like, oh, you lost a little bit of weight, Kirito. Oh, like, you know, you've been busy with your part-time job. I'm like, uh, like, it doesn't look like he's a skeleton. He's fine. And I'm sure you, you, got, you can see you guys have been talking. Like, the most is that he's a little tired. Like, I, just what the fuck? <laughs> it's just, it's so fucking creepy. But, like, don't worry, though, you get your cool action shot on this episode where then you see them in Gun Gale and, wow, do they hearken a lot to uh, the last video game, Fatal Bullet, which is A, there's a giant ad for it, there's the bullet, B-O-B, -B, or, you know, Bullets of Bullets, where the uh, actual tournament is called, it takes that. And I'm saying this as someone that's played Fatal Bullet, I haven't actually beaten it, but, like, I played probably, like, ten hours of it, and I was like, eh, it's fine. Like, there is also as well when you see them in the bar that pink girl she's like the main girl in that um in that game so a uh, huge reference to that not to mention in the opening there's the ordinal scale like virtual like pop idol there i'm like they're just taking everyone and i'm like all everyone from like, the movies and the games and i'm like they're just adding everyone in because that's the weird thing about fail bullet is that it has like everyone from all the video games and it's weird and like that girl's there and i'm like wait so is fatal bullet canon but in some sort of way where it's like 
I, again, it's just a little cameo, so it's it's harmless. You're not going to see these characters, but again, you um, we do know Ordinal Scale takes place before season t uh, after season two, but before season three, so that's definitely going to be involved. There, there's a bunch of weird stuff involved in it, which then turns into Kirito and Asuna having a serious little conversation, where Kirito has decided that. At some point, he is going to go to America because that's where the high-tech VR stuff is going on at the moment and he needs to experience it. And Dozzy with their, everything that's affected them with sort of online and like this whole past, he pretty much wants to create a better future at least. Like, be one of the first people to experience the new kind of world that we're heading into. And he asked Asuna to come with him. He was like, I generally care about you. I want to be with you. I know that full well that I want you to come with me. Like, I get it's like, it's the one thing where it's like, I don't think we've really talked much about like Arsenal, or like what exactly, because I think they are 18 at this point uh, in this, uh, in the past, or I think like since like they met each other when they were like, what, 15, 16, and like they spent like a year or so in like, um, in uh, Eincrad and. Overall, like, when I, uh, I think right now in the part of the story, since they're adults and, you know, a lot of them have, like, left, like, college, and I believe Asuna as well has just finished, like, high school for the most part, and, like, I think Kirito just straight up just went and just took a job afterwards, like, after the whole Sword Art incident, so I think that right now they're about 18, 19, and, like, no, I want you to come with me, and we'll go to America together, and... It's like, oh, there's this nice little moment, and they have a little kiss, and it's all, it's all romantic, and all that, you know, gobbledygook. Then there is a guy that approaches them who is one of the last remaining Laughing Coffin uh, people, which we saw was one of the uh, player killers um, down there. And he straight up stabs Kirito in real life, which there's a weird moment where Kirito's like, I need to pull my sword out. Oh, I'm in the real world. That still affects him. Like a twitch and he's like, oh yeah, that ain't gonna work. Not gonna lie, Kirito gets a good hit in there. Like, he stabs right into his leg. However, he pulls out this poison thing, um, this little injection, which is probably the crux of the reason why Kirito is seemingly stuck in, like, an MMO or something like that uh, happened to him, where it's like he's in some sort of comatose state, and I guess that, that his boss's idea is like, oh, I guess he's in a real serious condition, so I will put his brain in an MMO, so, like, his brain doesn't, you know, mount or, or, or something, like... Again, I have no idea what the hell like is happening on there, but we see that like he's clearly as kids, and time progresses differently in Underworld, and it, a lot of it is a lot of weird stuff right now, and I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot more explanations about this, but we, I'm curious to see what happens to this Laughing Coffin guy, like what is going to go down with him, and uh, like we see Asado on like some weird freighter, and I know at some point. Asuna is big, like that's the thing. I know a lot of the uh, the characters that you know on. I don't think they're as heavy in Underworld, but I know full well that Asuna has some stuff in this se in this season. I know a few of the others, so I'm curious what exactly is going to go down in this season of Sword Art Online. Again, we don't even know how long this season is going to be because this is the longest uh, uh, in the light novels. This is the longest arc. I believe it's double the amount or even triple the amount of what. Gungale was so very cute. I think Gungale was like four light novels, like maybe four to f uh, five, and this is like a heavy amount. I think it's like ten, like fourteen or something like that that we color. Like, and again, this is the last stuff that they colored because of the fact that after this, there is no more material to cover because the uh, there hasn't been any new stuff from the light novel guy that um, has created stuff. Like he's done all the stuff for. Um, the Elicization uh, arc, as it's known of, and I'm curious what's going to be going down with this arc, how they're going to be handling it, are we going to be having 24 episodes, take a break, and then come back, like, I'm, I'm curious, it's like every, I think it's without a doubt we're getting 24, uh, it just depends whether or not we're going to be continuing, as to say, this is being done by A1 Pictures, and they are working on two long series right now, they're working on Sword Art, which is their main uh, priority right now, 
and they've also as well got Fairy Tail going on, which Fairy Tail is being handled by Clover like Studio, which is their B team, but they also as well have their animators working side by side with these ones, and you can definitely tell by looking at the first episode of Fairy Tail season one finale and this, and it's like this was their major concern right now because Sword Art is their money maker, like compared to Fairy Tail, it's like both of them they get them a nice little tiny project, but it's like you look at all the promotional stuff, you look at all the figures, you look at all the like the mobile games, how many fucking sword out games there's like one there's once a year or something, something's coming out for this game and I'm like, yeah. There's so much stuff going on for um Sword Out. I'm like, yeah, they want a heavy uh put this out. Overall, how was season three's first episode? Um, very lengthy. A lot of stuff being plot dumped on you for right now about the soul and also as well what is the uh going on with Underworld, there's also introducing us to Alice, there's Yu Gi Oh, there's setting up a lot of few mysteries on there. I will say, like, as someone that enjoys SAO, like, because at the end of the day, SAO, I enjoy SAO casually. I'm not, like, super duper invested in it. Like, it's not the, the amazing thing you have to see it right now. I, I have fun with it. I enjoy it. It is dumb. It is goofy at some times. But it is a fun, schlocky action series at the end of the day for me. And I do enjoy some of these characters at the most part. I want to know what's going to go down. Look and, see, and seeing that this is the... To a lot of people, this is the highest, highly regarded arc, or like this is the best stuff of the sort out. So I am curious about that because, considering I really like season two's like stuff when they colored Yuki and everything, I that's still my favorite stuff in Sword Art. So I'm looking forward to what they do with the listization. But yeah, we will be covering more of this in the future um, uh, when, when we get the chance as well to cover uh, these episodes. So definitely you will be seeing more Sword Art on the channel and everything. But let me know you guys think of questions down below. What was your favorite part of this episode? What do you think about the Underworld stuff going on? Also as well, what do you think about the uh, current stuff that we've had like the movie? What did you think about Ordinal Scale? Again, I thought it was fine, but I know a few people really did like that movie a lot. So let me know you guys know. That's all from me. Thanks always for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time.